We're going to talk about <laughs> it. Station 19 writer's room incident involved written racial slur sparks inclusive workplace discussion, leadership structure changes. So I if think you it's so much funnier that this took place over Zoom. Yes. Purely over Zoom. So, so basically. Just no communication whatsoever. Uh, if you guys don't know what Station 19 is, it's a it's a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy. If that is because nobody in this chat, or if you like Grey's show, Anatomy, it seems you really like Grey's Anatomy, and if you 19. don't, you don't care at all. So so basically, what happened is, uh, in fact, I'm just gonna read it because it was reading it that did it to me. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the, we'll go down to the part that says, it says, more than a year later after the incident involving, they talk about George Floyd, they had some really powerful episode right after George Floyd came out. So I want you to make note, this is their weapon of choice. A powerful, a powerful episode. social commentary episode. They want to live in this arena where their job is to speak truth to power, even though they work for billion dollar companies uh, and they want to talk about social me social messaging and all this stuff. So if that's your weapon of choice, that's the arena you're in. Fine. Let's get into it. More than a year after the incident involving the depiction of racism on the page has left the writing team of Grey's Anatomy spinoff reeling. According to sources, it has to do with a writer's recent draft of an outline for an upcoming season six episode that included numerous uses of a racial slur by a racist character. I hear that the script was assigned to a white writer. So that's what they, they make sure to point that out, that that's the most important part of this, that the, the writer who was writing this racist character was white. Uh, and the word in question was, I'm not going to say the word. It starts with a B. Uh, it starts with a B. Uh, it says a derogatory reference to a person from Latino descent. The outline was met with shock and disbelief when shared with the writer's room and tensions grew to a point where the virtual room had to be put on pause. <laughs> Sources said Vernoff on Monday sent an email to the staff, a copy of which was obtained by deadline in which she spoke re of recent harm and systemic issues that would be addressed in a Zoom meeting on Tuesday. It was to be attended by Jones. That was the person who wrote the, an organizational psychologist. That, you know who's making more money off diversity, equity, inclusion than anyone? Consultants. Consultants They're and psychologists. A, a psychology consultant group specializing in fostering diversity and inclusion in work environments and leadership. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Nobody who works in the field that was just described is there to include or make anything better. Their, no. their, their job is to make your life miserable and make you feel disassociated <laughs> and disconnected from literally everybody you work with. As if doing your entire job in a writer's room virtually wasn't no. enough to make that happen. Exactly. And I, where I am speculating this tension came from actually wasn't shock and disbelief that he wrote it, but people waiting for the next reaction from their coworkers yeah. before they could give their response to the script outline. They had to understand socially whether other people found it to be acceptable. Yep. So like if you're in the Zoom call and people just start conversing about his, his outline as if it's no big deal, then likely all of these people would fold and act like it's fine. Because he wrote it in a tone that depicts that character in a bad, in a negative light. So you're not even allowed to write bad characters as bad characters anymore. It's kind of like the Papa John's thing. Like with, with him. With Papa John, he said the N-word on a call with other board members for Papa John's. And in referring the to it of, in the context yeah. of like, we wouldn't want to say this. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so that, and then he was you know, just publicly lambasted for that, even though it took no nuance into account. Yep. I, but I don't even think that the writer's room necessarily reacted that same way. Yeah. They reacted with fear about their own reputations. Yes. The outline was met with shock and disbelief when shared with the writer's room and tensions grew to a point where the virtual room had to be put on pause, sources said. Uh, I cannot understand what they're supposed to do. The whole point of a writer's room is to bounce ideas back and forth and have it feel creatively free. Uh, and you should be able to have your ideas shut down in a writer's room with yes. perfect comfortability. There was but a there that was a, didn't happen. There was a bunch of discussion about like some people saying there shouldn't have been dialogue in, a, in an outline anyways. That's not true. Some people use heavy dialogue in their outlines. Other people don't. That depends on the person writing well, it. Well, then it's, say that the problem was dialogue no. in his outline, not the word. Exactly. You know what? It's a real shame that we keep getting stories like these because 
I saw I saw his panic at that moment. We can't get any stories like this. <laughs> uh, because clearly, like, the world seems to be in the mental health crisis. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that to be funny. You know, like, it's, it's so evident by day-to-day -day interactions with people that, like, people seem to be, like, really struggling with some things. And the industry that should really, you know, be at it in its best behavior right now and be, like, completely, like trying to at, at their top form they're not i feel like they it's it behooves them for people to continue having worse and worse like mental health issues mm -hmm. and it's just like every day there's a new one every day like it, it raises more and more as if to like you know like guess you need the service more it's like apparently we don't because you know h how have, has any me had, like mental health professionals like they don't even seem to be like putting the curve down at all. We will not be, <laughs> we will not proceed with business as usual until the recent harm and systemic issues have been addressed and healing has begun. I want to know what healing. the F, what does that look like? What does healing look like? Uh, because somebody wrote a bad character saying bad things to, uh, to show just how bad the bad character was. What the hell needs to be healed from that? It's a writer's room. Their job is to be there to creatively output different dialogue and scenes together. And then people uh, come together to figure out the best way to do so. How could anybody feel creatively free in that environment? This is also them not wanting to decide how they want to do social commentary. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Because... They did this very impactful and important cultural commentary after uh, George Floyd's death. Yeah. And they consider that acceptable. Yeah. But when the wrong person makes the wrong step in that direction, then you have to shut it down. It's it, it like either it's all acceptable and on the table for writing or, or it's, it's not. not. And for the writers, it's like it's like being a sky. It's like being terrified of heights and having to choose skydiving as a career. Why would you write in this space? Why would you? If I was a straight white male writer, I would never, ever, ever, ever engage in this realm because you will lose this also, every time. It, I think them being on Zoom has a lot to do yes. with why this happened. That was the next question. Because you're not receiving people's reactions to what you wrote in real time with uh, their all of their facial expressions in person. And I feel like there's also a sense where on Zoom, you're still not in private. Um, whereas in a physical room together, then the privacy would allow people to give more honest feedback and feel freer to give, yeah. you know. I don't think there's a single industry where a person that has these proclivities is suited for. Yeah. Like truly. Like you have to well, be like the consultant industry. The con I we mean, need a shirt that says "Down with the consultant class." I mean to be we like effective as a professional, yeah. like truly, because like unless you're like a, a completely independent, like subscriber-based mommy blogger that's like drink, <laughs> that's like drinking wine and saying "Yes, Queen" twenty four seven to your like band of merry idiots. Like I truly don't see like you can't like you can't write like you can't take feedback yeah right that's so crucial to pretty much yep. 60 percent of like 21st century jobs it's also it's also network tv so likely the the word would have been edited in some way where like he said it and then they cut the shot uh, uh so they wouldn't have heard it. i don't know if that word would have been allowed uh on, on network tv i don't i think it would have been so, so it's a rather dated Term. term anyways and i was watching i was re-watching american gangster the other night and there's a scene at the end where uh, a character uses a very offensive term uh for a jewish person but th it's to uh, it's to show you how bad this dude is like this character's uh, a, a piece of crap and he it shows in his language and the way he treats other people but the scene like they get the the, the guy in question doesn't have a lot of screen time so they kind of have to show you something very very shocking to get it across that this is not a guy that you want to root for right towards the end i suppose so yeah. so like if they weren't able to do that now if that, that movie came out now and they had to cut that scene would it have been as impactful no i don't think it would have you know what i feel like i just had an epiphany right now okay what is it like perhaps the reason why every single movie and show that we get is a remake 
is because like the condition of the current writing rooms. Well, yeah, writing because, rooms like, are awful right now. Right, because and they can't ever come to a consensus of mm-hmm. like what they want to write because they just have all these invisible rules about all these like um, audiences that they have to pander and cater to. So and like. If you do something for, let's say, LGBT, then you're not doing something for the African-American community, then you're not doing something for natives, then you're not doing something for Hispanics. And they're all just, they just keep fighting and fighting for clout. Yep. And at some point, you know, the purpose of what well, their objective was, that like, gets lost, is like, well, let's do Batman for the trillionth time. Yeah. Yep. Well, doing this virtually and with too many people involved at once mm-hmm. is a recipe for disaster. But maybe back in the day, a large writer's room where people can all spitball ideas works when there was creative freedom. And, and actual d- privacy, because as much as it can seem like you have privacy on a digital platform, you know you, that you don't. Yeah. And anyone could be recording the entire exactly. thing. Exactly. Like, I, I think about that now. Like People are on guard because they know that they could be recorded at any time. And you just don't have the same chemistry that you would yep. It does not translate in the same room. Like I've got like one of my, one of the things that I noticed is like, uh, I, I watched a couple of compilations back in the day of like people who did like virtual interviews and then seeing that same person interviewed in person and almost always their dynamic and their ability to convey what they believe or, mm-hmm. or, or feel more ingratiating as an interviewee always comes across better when they're face to face with that person. Yeah. On a, vi- a virtual interview, someone has to force themselves to look at the webcam so that it appears to the other person like they're making eye contact that's so unintuitive and take that to the writer's room how are you going to effectively communicate the creative ideas you have also audio delay is one of the worst parts of like any type of like whenever like you see like people do their interviews like we're live with so-and-so like hi bob (laughs) like (laughs) they they do that on um pierce morgan uncensored yeah it's so bad (laughs) Pierce morgan (laughs) like it's hard enough like sometimes like even in 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 the show like we're we're all like good friends and like we're respectful of each other and you you don't want to step on anyone's point so like imagine like a zoom call of these like narcissistic psychopaths that all just want to have their like clap moment yep so somebody says, I, I was reading some of the comments and it was really funny because I feel bad for the poor uninitiated people in the comments section who don't realize how bad Hollywood is. And they're like, what's, I don't get it. So it says, <laughs> what exactly happened? Was it a character saying it or a real person saying it? Very confused. If they're censoring <laughs> what a racist would say, isn't that not in character? Oh, to be a fly on, the, on that psychology group session. Please someone document that. There are harmful words to every group, but pretend that they don't exist. That... <laughs> That ignorance doesn't exist is also harmful. So it's like these poor people just don't know how bad Hollywood has gotten. So they're kind of called it's like maybe it's like a culture shock. Like they don't realize that they've gone off the they're deep like end. yelling into the void. Yeah. So how are writers supposed to portray bigoted characters without using the actual language? How about no one gets to use any pejorative language, including those who happen to be part of the ethnic group in the slur? We'll just have to invent new language in place of the word. So in place of the Mexican pejorative term, because it's not for all people of Spanish speaking descent we'll use the word fluffy cloud <laughs> but even by th- so by that logic like how do you convey a villain in with those rules yep. so like would you imagine the joker being like haha batman my pronouns are they them and this like like what do you mean is this like, because the writer was white well absolutely yeah because if you're trying to do social commentary on race relations of any kind and you're white then you need to sit down and be quiet yep. and let the uh, let the marginalized groups talk. You can't have an opinion. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's uh this story is one of those ones like there was the other one about the there was a, another I don't remember the name of the person there like who was like on a show last year who ro- was brought in to write for or like to give stories about what he had experienced at like the 92 race riots mm-hmm. and talked about how a, 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 a racist cop had called him the N word and he said the N word in the in the meeting. And got fired for saying a story about what actually happened to him. That's insane. (laughs) They just can't hear the sound. Yeah. That's insane. So uh, it's just like, this is one of those stories where, okay, so uh, this is the other one. It says, whether it's racism, ageism, unwanted sexual attention in the workplace, etc. If one person is made to feel uncomfortable, or even if a third person is afraid of the sec- that a second person was uncomfortable. That's exactly what I was referring to. All of them were waiting for the next person's yeah. reaction. And you it know wasn't this- that they were all sh- in shock. And you know this dude was never going to get any backup. 
No, their career. Everyone's no. like, no, nah, I'm not risking my career for this dude. No, no I way. I would like to see the the gender breakdown in this meeting as well. Oh yeah, dude, if it was a bunch of women. Wham! Yeah, it would have been. Dude, <laughs> I gotta tell you. So I used to. I'm not gonna say the name of the company, but like I used to work for like a pretty like corpo company, and rarely, but occasionally, sometimes I, I like try to speak up every time there was like some kind of this nonsense, mm-hmm. and dude, like. The, like the backlash would be immediate and extreme and you can see on people's faces that like some people were like oh man like he's really gonna eat it after that one yeah. and like I'm sure like in like a less like mm. po- pop- uh, politicized world like some people would have said anything but like yeah that's that's what people are thinking they're just like trying to protect their livelihood yeah. every single person there saw their life flat it's like the like when we when lauren southern was on the guy says the n-word in the in the video and he's just repeat all he's and doing he's is repeating song lyrics and you literally see like he's about to lose his life your life is over because people are mentally ill and they yeah. don't understand how to handle social situations at all and we have done this to ourselves we have made our relations through intersectionality uh the uh, the pushing of the progressive agenda uh, we have made it worse for ourselves and we are way uh, and we're suffering because of it. Well, I don't even know if it's political as much as it's just like we were never supposed to have Internet access. No, and we like n- more. We weren't supposed to know that this many people even existed, let yeah. alone that this many people could hate you. <laughs> yep, that's that's the like me and Mary differ on our opinions of uh, the importance of the printing press, but I definitely uh, agree that well, the we internet... wouldn't have gotten to the internet without <laughs> it. That's for sure. But the uh, to me the sometimes one of the most important things I think is the internet was definitely a mistake. <laughs> but think about the dank memes. The, the May Mays, yep. though. Yep. <laughs> Tis worth. Someone said Mary was born during the last crisis of the writers' strike. Uh, Did that occur in 2000? There was a writer's strike in 2007 I as well. I remember that being in the late 2000s. Yeah, there was a writer's strike in 2007. That's the reason uh, Star the, the second Transformers movie is so bad. Well, I love it, but other people hate it. Uh, it's because it was made during a writer's strike. There's uh, whole shows were canceled because that they were going on during that writer's strike. Yeah, mm-hmm. They got precipitously worse. The writing? Well, there's also just too much to be made now, and there's just not enough good writers to go around. The Transformers s- movies, I mean. Uh, I, I love the first three. I like the first I one. The, the second one was like less The second good. one's awful, but I still love it, and the third one is objectively fine. The rest of them... It's objectively I could, fine. The rest of them I could take <laughs> it or leave it. <laughs> going to put that Patrick on my Dempsey resume. It. It's got Patrick Dempsey in it. How bad could it be? <laughs> Let's get to Super Chats. Let's do it. Jonathan Harris said, have a crisis party, my guys. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for that. Ravioli, ravioli, the sheriff shot my <laughs> dogioli, sent us a dollar with no message. Thank you. Maybe the name was the message. F. Obviously. <laughs> F's in chat for the doggy, please. <laughs> um, Bad app. Should I even say that? I don't know. I don't want to say that. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, bad app. Classic Hobbit bad said, app. said, these are the people streaming. Can't handle life. Yep. Yeah. Darko's one. <laughs> you can said, skip the word. I don't oh, know if we as can. a Mexican, blank is my favorite word to use to describe myself. If someone tried to use it to be racist to me, I'd laugh. My favorite joke is <laughs> I may be a blank, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let's go. <laughs> See, it's like they want to speak for all, for everyone. And we're going to talk about that when we get into my follow-up segments in Podluck about Eminem and my band. Yeah. And yes, oh, my God, dude. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Harris said, was there outrage for Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus dialogue? I just played it last night, and it had a bunch of hard N-words in the opening dialogue. It is funny how they pick and choose where to enforce the... Uh, it's like a powder keg. Like it's, It could go off at any time in any situation, but you never know where it's going to be enforced forced and where it won't yeah these type of things isn't there a director that's like notorious for having the n-word in his movies um i mean samuel tarantino uh, Tar- uh, does he tarantino no. does oh that yeah lot, no, he, he? he says f-word in the, in it, like, nah, no bro he has both i thought it was Trust. just like straight up racial slurs yeah. <laughs> i don't know i haven't seen enough of them to know and um, then nero garcia oh and and nathan costs he's yep. okay nero garcia said if more people were punched into the face We'd have a moon and Mars colony by now. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure how you made that association. I, I don't know. Like, uh. would we punch them to the moon? He's not not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I mean, more so if people were just like raised properly. We could do with uh, um, like I, one of the most the funniest debates that I still people here have lately, and it's less political than a lot of the other ones. Is like, should you spank your kids? It's still rather political. I think it it divides across political lines. So. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe but it just feels like such a like a I don't know like my my. Uh, I don't know if we talk about these situations, like well, <laughs> for, for in my family, but uh, let's like, save it for behind the paywall. Yeah, we'll, we'll, put, that, we'll put that one behind the paywall. <laughs> I have some takes on that. Everyone does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Nathan Koss said, "We live in the time of anti-definitions. If we define the terms and words we aren't allowed to use, we can't shift the goalposts at a moment's notice. It's not about knowing what to fight against; it's about wielding the mob." The 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 thing about like her her in this article the. When she gave her, when the producer of the show gave their speech about everything, when they talk about things like, uh, I'll get right back into it. When she talks about things like healing and uh, all the dialogue, it's that's, all buzzwords. That's women. It's, I'm sorry. That is that is women controlling speech, controlling communication, because that's what they want. They're out of control, and, and they want to take it back. Yeah. And it's all buzzwords, and you can't like you can't even have a rational discussion about whatever you're talking about because you have to decode what the hell they mean to begin That's with. That's like the pathological levels of altruism and misguided empathy that women have yeah. being weaponized. It's like uh, when they were talking about Ocean, Ocean's Eight last <laughs> night, and like one big thing that came up in Ocean's Eight and the three five five is like. Work is like what's fair for salaries for these people. Men don't care about what's fair for salaries. They want to make their like they're, they're going to negotiate their highest contract that they can. They're not going to worry about what their co-stars making because it's not their business. The women are the ones that care about who's uh, whether they're making the fair amount of money. And, and it's weird because I believe men do. are the more competitive. Yeah. Of the sexes. Yes. It's kind of getting reversed. Yep. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.